Hello everybody, welcome back to the MattVidPro AI YouTube channel, and welcome to the calm before the storm in the AI space. Well, the truth is that it's never fully calm in the AI space, but a storm is coming. It's called Gemini 3 from Google, and apparently NanoBanana 2.0 is going to be attached alongside it. Speculation is pretty wide that these models are going to show up by the end of this year, and I've got some new demos. There's a lot of smaller, more nuanced updates that get swept under the rug, so I love to talk about those, as well as other major updates you might have missed. First up, we've got a pretty important update inside of ChatGPT. You can now interrupt long-running queries and add new context without restarting or losing progress. Especially useful for refining deep research or GPT-5 Pro queries, the model can adjust its response with your new requirements. Here is how it's supposed to work. You send your prompt off and the AI begins to think, of course, and we should now have stop and update symbols down in the bottom corner here, where where we can pause, add a little bit of extra context. Not gonna lie to you guys, with extended thinking on, I've got ChatGPT+, Plus. if I send a query out, I mean, it definitely starts to think, and I can click on this, but I don't see any way to pause or add additional context, which would be very, very useful, and I have ended up in those situations before where I send a quick prompt off to ChatGPT, and I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot to mention this, or I want to talk a little bit more about this. Maybe the update just hasn't landed on my account, but I'm really hoping this isn't just for pro users. That would seem pretty silly. As expected, Sora is also receiving updates pretty regularly. I find myself talking about new features every week right now and they've just added this leaderboard which is a very interesting social feature it's a leaderboard which ranks based on the day number one cameoed number one remixed and number one characters which appear to be a ring doorbell orangutan and then these two for remixed i do recognize fancy sun here he's blown up on sora quite a bit as well as cosmic sky of course it's no surprise though that jake paul and rick Ricky Berwick are at the top of the cameo leaderboards. Honestly, I'm assuming the point of these leaderboards is to promote a little bit more competition, creativity, and use within the Sora app, especially now that access has been expanded to other countries and now the Android app is finally out. You'll also see under settings in the Sora app and on the website that it's going to tell you how many video generations you have left and when you'll get more. If you run out of generations for free, you can actually now pay for more. 10 bucks for 25, 20 for 50, 40 bucks for 100 video gens. I mean, honestly, happy they're adding a blanket way to just buy more gens for only Sora. And now we can finally see how many generations we have left. Although it looks like they're putting more restrictive caps on how many free generations you get. Sora has been a pretty crazy product to see launch and appear in the mainstream world. It set a lot of discussions about AI video absolutely on fire. And and honestly, I just can't help but think that Google has their work cut out for them regarding VO4. It's going to be tough to compete with this, but hey, pressure makes diamonds. Let's keep this ball rolling. Stability AI has mostly won its copyright lawsuit against Getty Images. The court has dismissed the secondary infringement claims over stable diffusion training. They found no reproduction of Getty Images and model weights or outputs under CDPA section 1722-23. They also ruled that for secondary copyright infringement to have held up here, the models would have to store actual copies of the images and not just learn distributions. This is huge because it basically says that the models aren't learning the images themselves, but the intrinsic values that make up the images themselves, and they're stored as distributions, not copies. Very basic layman's term description, I'm sure I'm butchering it a little bit. Where the trademark claims it did succeed is on synthetic synthetic watermarks in older versions of the models. Narrow trademark win for Getty, but overall a large boost and a large win for AI developers and especially AI firms that are already in lawsuits. Huge thanks to Cole Trigoskis for the summary as well as good citations. All right, a lot of you are probably expecting me to talk about this, but Kimi K2 thinking is here and the benchmarks are wild. This is an open source model from China. Listen, this thing is seen beating GPT-5, Claude 4.5 Sonnet and several benchmarks while also costing much less than Sonnet 
it at the very least. GPT-5 is actually very cost-effective still. Just from this, you can already see Kimmy K2 scoring a 55 on Humanity's last exam. This is text-only with tool use, and of course, this is a thinking model. I'm going to assume that chat GPT-5 here is in its standard thinking protocol with Claude 4.5 Sonnet lagging behind. Browse comp, again, very close between Kimmy K2 and GPT-5, but Kimmy K2 ekes it out just barely on Seal Zero latest information collection. They're all very, very close, but Kimmy K2 takes the crown. Multilingual Anthropics model dominates. Kimmy K2 lags behind a little bit with OpenAI and last. Now, for Live Code Bench and SWE Verified, GPT-5 takes the coding crown, but Kimmy K2 is right on its tail with Anthropic lagging slightly behind. For SWE, Kimmy is in last, but is not far behind from GPT-5 and then Anthropic, who's in the lead. Uh, pretty crazy benchmarks. This is just a thinking model, guys. Is it as easy to use out of the box? Of course not, but this is open source, code and weights. You can get everything you need right here on Hugging Face. The community is definitely going to be able to leverage this model, trim it down to run very efficiently on consumer-grade hardware, and literally any AI company can learn from how they built the model and how it works under the hood, because everything is transparent and open. Moonshot AI should be proud of themselves for this, but I will say I expect Gemini 3 to crush Kimmy K2 thinking. Here is a fun, more relaxing project. This comes from UV Codes. Claims to have built AI agents that work in Minecraft. It's not the first time I've seen this. It seems like you can talk to them directly in the chat. This appears to work on the Bedrock version. Yeah, simple text commands. Apparently, these agents can just go off and build a whole house by themselves, which is pretty cool. You can see they're copying each other's designs, kind of building something that looks kind of coherent, but also a little bit messy. Here they are slaying mobs or doing a little bit of mining. Issue with this is that I can't actually find any code or anywhere to try it for yourself, so it's just sort of a demo video right now floating around X. I feel like playing a survival game mode with a couple of companions by your side could be really cool. This also could lead into a wider ranged mob that has much more realistic interactive NPCs that maybe you could come across around the world or something like that. I saw a lot of comments here saying that this is just like cheating in video games or something, but it's like, yeah, this is a tech demo. We could do a lot more with this framework and these concepts. AI could really bring video game NPCs to life. I think there's no doubting that. Next up, this comes from InWorld AI. I don't talk about these guys too much, but I've had my eye on them for a long time. They actually focus on AI NPCs in video games. They're much more business to business about it. They work with game devs. They work with the engine companies like Unreal or Unity. These guys have just debuted a new text-to-speech model, though, that is number one on the artificial analysis leaderboard. It's $10 for 10 million characters of speech, which is super cost-efficient, and you can try this one out today. To me, this is very impressive to see with InWorld. Text-to-speech is only a part of what they're doing as a business, and they've easily got the highest ELO here on the Artificial Analysis Leaderboard, taking out Minimax, OpenAI, Eleven Labs. That is pretty crazy. I'll link this down below, but this is where you can try the text-to-speech out for yourself. They've got a decent amount of voices to play with, and it seems like it can intake emotions as well. Listen to this, for example. Foolish mortal. You dare to enter my realm? Your courage will be your downfall. Soon you will learn that no one escapes from here. Let's edit it. Okay, this will be a pretty funny test. We're starting off with the initial one, but then he's going to do a surprised gasp, realize that we brought barbecue to the party, and he's going to let us right on in. Let's take a listen. Foolish mortal, you dare to enter my realm. Your courage will be your downfall. Soon you will learn that no one escapes from here. What? You brought a slow roast barbecue? Is that a rack of ribs? Well, come right in then. You can put that right over there. Let me get my famous sauce. Make yourselves at home. It's, it's pretty human. It's pretty emotional. Definitely would work, I think, for a video game scenario, which is what InWorld specializes in, right? We'll try one more. I remember the days when you still could trust a video. Who knows what's I generated anymore? I mean, I mean, it's pretty decent. Definitely up there with Eleven Labs, I would say. 
it's going to depend on the type of tools you need. Like I said, if you're making a video game, you want live NPC characters that sound good. This is going to be what you want. All right, guys, no more waiting. Let's talk about Gemini 3. We keep seeing more demos. We keep seeing more leaks. It has got to be right around the corner. This is the older lithium flow checkpoint that people have been getting uh, through A and B testing. This comes from Legit API, a fully composed piece by Gemini 3 in the title apparently is ascension protocol no ai music generators this is just an llm using software to create music from scratch It's pretty advanced. That's impressive, dude. Oh my gosh. It might have had a couple of screw-ups in there, and I'm no musician, but definitely sounds like piano music. Like, you could have showed me this and been like, hey, like, a pretty intermediate to advanced learning composer on piano wrote this, and I would have believed you. Gemini 3 is just gonna be crazy. And I've got another one for you. This is from our friend Chetus Lua. This is the latest checkpoint, 3.0 Pro EXP. This is a planet visualizer in full 3D. It has topology that is fully adjustable, which is pretty cool. And this has a code pen link as well. You could try this at home. Fully made with Gemini 3. Chetus Lua points out that this was made in just two minutes by Gemini 3. And with all of this detail, it's just really, really shocking. The planet even has an atmosphere. And like I said, everything is adjustable. We can, we can increase or decrease the density, even adjust the color of the atmosphere or any of the colors of the planet. We can make the ice caps much more encompassing as if the planet was very far away from a sun. Or maybe, you know, they're quite a bit smaller. Make the planet rough or more smooth. You can make the mountains ridiculously high, even stretch past the atmosphere it looks like. It's definitely a pretty crazy little code pen demo, and you can make some really cool visuals, honestly, with it. It's hard to believe that it's all AI generated. How many lines is this? This is only about 519 lines of code, so it's being very functional and very efficient with the code that it's creating. This is complicated, man. Knash here also reminding us that Gemini 3.0 is so so good it can simulate entire video game consoles. Don't get me wrong, yes, it's a rudimentary Nintendo Switch. <sighs> But just from code, just from a text prompt, it's able to generate what the Switch is supposed to look like with the controllers on each side, the buttons and the sticks in the correct places, even the ability to actually browse the touchscreen on the Switch and select your game in the same style that a Nintendo Switch really would have. It's even got some very rudimentary games like Super Plumber, this is just like a Mario clone that it built inside of this fake Nintendo Switch, and it does even have sound effects. Very basic, but you can see the buttons even moving on screen. It's a little buggy and glitchy, but pretty cool. I've never seen a large language model get to this point. Like, typically they have struggle even creating a visual controller example just with code. This one is creating a working game example with just code, which is crazy, right? Built the whole system outside, mapped how it worked, and then built the games and OS. The Pokemon demo is pretty cool. You're fighting a wild polygon, which is fun, but you can even like move throughout the grass in the town to end up in a Pokemon battle. I think for the power users, one of the main things on everybody's mind is whether or not Google is going to end up lobotomizing Gemini 3.0 due to safety issues or maybe even fear that the model would be too powerful. I really don't know what Google thinks when it does things, but lobotomization over fine tuning of models, it's been a concern since the days of GPT-4. And of course, everybody's worried about it in regards to Gemini 3. Regardless, I still think it's going to be a really good model, but please, like these older checkpoints are clearly very competent. We need to stay at that level of competency. Now let's talk about Nano Banana 2. The code name for this seems to be Gempix 2. 
Gemini Pictures. After the hit success of the initial Nano Banana, it's no wonder that they're releasing another variant so, so quickly. I think Nano Banana is a really great model. I still use it, but my number one complaint about the initial Nano Banana is it struggled to create entirely new scenes based on image references. Sometimes it likes to stick to one reference or another, even when I directly try to steer it away or really prompted to say like, hey, this is exactly what I'm looking for. It's still like, no, we want to use your entire, you know, background from the photo instead of cutting you out and putting somewhere else or it's really about the understanding, right? So I'm really hoping for better prompt understanding, better adherence and ability to take references and create something entirely new. This one's really cool. There is a new multiple angle Laura. This is for Quint Image. You can upload any picture you want and rotate it, which is really awesome. This will help so many people for consistent movie scenes if they do a lot of image to video work. This Laura is open source and available right now on Hugging Face and they've also got a Hugging Face space where you can try it out. Let's upload this little creepy lemon dude. We'll go a little bit closer up let's say. Generation time is very fast with this. Yeah it definitely moves him a little bit closer. It keeps him mostly intact for detail. Uh, it's very impressive. I mean I see this blemish. I see this blemish. His eyes look relatively similar. Now what if we wanted to rotate him? 90 degrees. Okay, yeah, that works pretty freaking great. You can still even see like the slight divoting on his head, which can be seen in this initial image. It's good at preserving those fine details. Wow, this is super cool. Now let's try the worm angle. We're going to lower the camera a little bit. Wow. Okay. Yeah, no, th this thing is pretty stellar. This is an awesome lore. I love to see cool stuff trained like this. It's open source. It's free. It's fast and it just works. One of the best parts is the malleability of this. You can see Victor Mustar showing it off as being state of the art for image rotation like this. Very complicated. We've got the hugging face suit and someone hugging them and then we're going to rotate the entire thing. It even keeps a lot of the text intact. Works on stuff as simple as logos or as complicated as people. All that's going to be linked down below, but we do have another piece of camera adjustment related news. VO 3.1 now officially has camera adjustment. You can adjust the camera position or add different kinds of motion. Tim from Theoretically Media, follow him on YouTube, did some great testing on this. Here's a sneak peek at what the user interface actually looks like. Got a couple of options, up, left, closer, stationary, down, right, further typical cinematic camera movement options you'll notice on the corners of the image you don't see any push in or pull away rock solid here we can see the camera orbiting upwards creates a more dramatic shot but it does it very stable slow and well controlled you'll notice that all the assets across all of these the clothing the older character the younger dude the fire in the background consistent. Tim is using an image upload here to make all of this happen, but it's good to see that VO 3.1 while doing all of these dynamic camera adjustments can keep things so coherent. They've got the classic Jaws style dolly zoom shot. Great testing from Tim here. It looks like he's got a new video on this. If you want to dive a little bit deeper, his channel is great and it's one of my top recommended channels other than of course my own. I don't typically dive into the Google video stuff as much as he does, so check that out. Fine. Finally, from Mark Kreshman, this is XAI's video model, Grok video, solving a maze with a little mouse. It's a really interesting demonstration of the visual and spatial intelligence that these AI video models possess under the hood. We can put the cheese in a certain way, we can start the mouse in a certain spot, and the model is intelligent enough to literally guide the next frames to put the mouse where it needs to go without fully violating the rules of the maze. It's an easy maze, don't get me wrong. You go down this way, you go down this way, and then an extra little bump gets made as the mouse goes over here and another little block, but it's coherent and it's the intelligent way to solve the maze. It did it correctly. Pretty crazy. Kind of reminds me of like the immersion intelligence you see in slime mold for example, where it can also solve mazes. Works very differently, of course. It's just really cool to see how spatial understanding can crop up in all kinds of forms of intelligence from, you know, humans, cats, dogs, to slime mold and AI video. Well, at any rate, guys, that's going to be it from me for today. If you always want to stay on top of the latest and greatest in the AI space, I suggest you join my Discord server. We've got a fantastic AI news leaks channel. If you 
want to hear about something first, I suggest going there. You can also find my latest takes and my latest updates on the AI space by following me on X at MattVidPro. And of course, I'm also on Sora messing around and posting videos. I hope all of you have a great weekend and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.